I am the best GMRS mobile radio there is. You have a loose transistor if you believe that. What did you say to me? You hurt me. Fight. What's up everybody? We're out in a beautiful spot in Stanislaus National Forest today because we're going to be testing out some GMRS mobile radios. In my right hand, I have my trusty Midland MXT 275. I've had this thing for a little over a year and it's always been reliable and faithful. In my left hand, I have a Redivis RA86. Which mobile radio will reign supreme? Let's find out. Before we get to the test, let's compare some of the features and specs of the two radios. So I put together this handy dandy little list here and the Redivis has 20 watts of power in high power mode and 5 watts in low. The Midland 15 watts in high and I'm not sure how much in low, they don't advertise that, but I'm guessing 5 watts. Now both have 22 channels and 8 repeater channels. Uh, the privacy codes is where it differs a little bit. So with the Redivis you have 50 CTCSS codes and 210 DCS codes. And Midland kind of, I guess for lack of a better term, dumbs it down for people. They just have their version of 142 privacy codes. Both have NOAA weather, both have dual speakers and an external speaker jack. And you can change the backlight colors on both, but the Redivis only has four background light colors and the Midland has seven. Midland also includes a USB-C charging port on the base unit and a headset jack on the mic unit, which the Redivis has neither of those. Also, full disclosure, Redivis did send me the RA86 for testing and to make a video review. The Midland I bought with my own money, but Redivis is not paying me for my opinion. As always, my opinions are my own. Let's take a look at the mobile GMRS radio that Redivis sent me. This is the model RA86. I haven't even had time to open it yet, so let's take a look together. Well, we got a manual, and the first thing that really stands out is the handheld right here that has all the controls on the front. So we pull that out. So we have the actual radio unit right here. And we've got a power cord with a cigarette lighter adapter. The little antenna that it comes with that has a magnetic base. A mounting bracket. Looks like some big thumb screws for the mounting bracket and a little clip, I'm assuming, so that you can mount this and then hang the uh, mic right here. And then we've got some little plates for you to stick the magnetic antenna to. That's it. All right, guys, so we're going to test and compare the two mobile GMRS radios right now as best as I can. I don't have any, like, testing equipment, nor would I know how to use that, and I'm not a radio expert, nor am I a radio amateur even. I'm just your average end user that wants things to work and work as simply as possible. But we're going to compare these two, see how they do. For the duration of this trip so far, for two days now, I've been using the Redivis RA86, and it's been just as good as the Midland one I've had for a year now. Um, don't really notice any difference in performance, but we're going to try to compare them by seeing how far before we lose contact with my buddy behind me. So he's going to head on down the road here from where I'm parked currently, and we're going to start with the Midland MXT275. He has the same exact mobile GMRS radio as this, and he's going to head on down the road, like I said, and... As soon as he loses contact with me, he'll record the GPS coordinates, and then we'll use that to determine, like, range, basically. And then we're going to run the same test again, except I'll have the Redivis RA86 plugged in instead. Uh, what's interesting is that the Redivis has the same exact power plug as the Midland, and obviously the same antenna connection, so it's really easy for me to swap back and forth with them. Um, so, yeah, let's see how this goes. So this is my buddy John's rig, and as you can see, he's got the Midland magnetic antenna mounted on his hood. It's the one that the MXT275 comes with. And I will be using this 33-inch 5 decibel gain whip antenna when we're testing both radios out. All right, so I just switched radios now. John found the point where we were unable to communicate with each other. He dropped a pin for GPS coordinates, so we'll take a look at that later. But I swapped to the Redivis RA86 now. So I'm going to check it with John, make sure he can still hear me where he's currently stopped. 
Hey, John, do you copy? Do you copy? I do. Very clear. Like, I'm getting a little bit of static from you, but you hear me more clearly than earlier with the Midland? Yeah, very, very clear. That's interesting. Okay, so let's, um, why don't you drive away from me when it's safe for you to do that? And... We're going to see if we can get any little extra distance with me using this mobile radio versus the Midland one earlier. So John, do you copy? Do you copy? I cannot hear you. I repeat, I cannot hear you. Do you copy? All right. Looks like we lost touch again. Maybe we squeezed another couple hundred feet out of that. We'll see. We'll see when he uh, gets me the GPS coordinates. So here are the results from our test. I'm using Gaia GPS to help illustrate what's going on, and we have GPS coordinates recorded by John during this test. This red marker is our starting location where I stayed the entire time, and John drove down this Forest Service road until he hit this blue marker when we lost contact when I was using the MXT-275. He was able to get a little bit further down the road to this yellow marker when I was using the Redivis RA-86. Keep in mind, John was using the same equipment the entire time for this test. He was using the Midland MXT-275 plus the included antenna. Whereas, I was switching between the two radios using that whip antenna that I showed you earlier for both radios. So let's take a look at the range difference between the two radios here. First, the Midland. So that blue line is a straight shot from our starting location to where we lost contact. And that's a distance of 1.37 miles with some elevation change, as you can see, and quite a lot of trees in between. So this is a pretty good real world test of being in the mountains where you don't have line of sight. Um, you're going through trees and hills and things like that. So not a bad distance for radio contact. But we got a little more distance out of the Redivis RA-86, so let's check that one. So this yellow line is a straight shot from our starting location to where we lost contact. And that's a distance of 1.81 miles now. Again, with some elevation change, obviously, same trees in the way, things like that. But a pretty decent improvement in range overall. And the only difference between these two radios, really, is that extra... 5 watts of power from the Redivis RA-86. I mean, that's my only explanation for the improved range. All right, so the Bidland MXT-275. There's the display screen, and it's enough information to know, like, what channel you're on and if you have a privacy code enabled or not. Um, if we take a look at the menu, everything is in shorthand code. And I don't change settings often enough to remember what these things mean. So I'd have to go through the manual again and take a look if I need to ever change anything. Again, that doesn't happen very often, but when it does, like, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, there's a big difference between this and the Redivis radio in terms of the menu, and I'll show you the Red Redivis radio in a moment. Um, both radios have NOAA weather, and I'm not in an area where I can actually receive NOAA weather signal right now. Uh, otherwise, they're very similar radios, um, which we'll see in a moment. Um, the Midland does have a mic, like headset input on the side of the, uh, I don't even know what to call this, of the handheld unit here. And the control unit down here, or whatever that's called, has a extra little USB-C plug down here for you to charge something off of. Again, I've been using these for over a year now, and it's always been reliable. I have no real complaints about it. It's a perfectly good radio for my needs, but let's compare it to the Redivis. Now let's look at the Redivis RA-86. Not the same amount of information on the screen in their normal use, but if you go into the menu, like I was kind of mentioning earlier when we were looking at the Midland, these are like, oh my gosh, actual words. Not like shorthand code that I can never remember. 
And again, I don't change the settings very often, but when I do, like I want to know what I'm changing without having to flip through a manual every time to figure out what I'm doing. So to me, this is super useful. It just kind of makes sense. Otherwise, the radios are very similar, um, other than those two features that I mentioned on the Midland where it has the jack for the headset and that little additional USB-C charger on that control unit down there. Uh, those features I don't really use, so that's not a deal breaker for me, maybe for you. Um, they both have NOAA weather and yeah, privacy codes and all that good stuff. Um, one distinction is that it seems after doing some research, again, I'm not a radio expert, right? That every manufacturer calls privacy code something different, first of all. And secondly, they all use like a different, I guess the best way to put it is nomenclature. Um, for example, on the Redivis, I have it set to DCS 99 for a privacy code. Uh, on the Midland, it's 77. And I don't know if there's any kind of standardization on that. But the Redivis manual does show you like a little guide on how to, I guess, translate between some of the different more popular manufacturers so that the radios can talk to each other. And that's what I had to do in order to get the Redivis to talk to my buddy's MXT 275. Um, but yeah, they're really similar radios. Like the handset looks almost identical in a lot of ways. Let me grab the Midland one. Um, I mean, the middle one's a little bit bigger and heavier, but pretty identical. And then even the control units, like I said, they use the same exact power plug. I don't know if that's a standardized thing. Um, obviously, the antenna connection is standardized, though. And size-wise, almost the same, the Redivis being slightly larger all around, but pretty close in both what I can tell quality and ease of use other than the menu system. So let's find out which one I like better. Okay, so what is the final verdict between my current Midland MXT 275 and this new to me Redivis RA86? We kind of looked at the differences between the two, kind of compared the performance between the two. And you know what really wins it out for me is the fact that I can understand the menu on the Redivis RA86. Remember, the Midland had like the little shorthand, like two letter code for whatever setting you're trying to change, which I never remember what they are. And the RA86 menu had like, you know, full on words that are easily understood by anybody. That addition of the headset jack and that little USB-C plug on the front of the control unit of the Midland. Um, I never use those features. Maybe those are deal breakers for you, but I don't use those two features. So the Redivis wins it out for me. Remember, Redivis did not pay me for my opinion. My opinions are my own. All they did was send me the product to test and review for them. So there you have it, guys. You take your pick. If your whole group uses Midland, there's no reason to not go Midland. But if you've got a choice, this would be my pick. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you'll join me for the next one. And always remember, destinations don't matter. The journey matters. Journey with a Redivis radio. So I've been back from the trip for a couple days now. And just to show you guys that I'm not full of it when I said I would pick the Redivis, there she is permanently installed in my rig. Then let me show you the NOAA weather where I can get a signal when we're up in the mountains there. Every eight seconds, hit point, sir. Wave rider, buoy water temperature 53. All right, so I got it mounted down there where the Midland used to be. And she is good to go for our next adventure. And there's the old Midland that I ripped out. There's the mount right underneath. So anybody want to buy? An old Midland MXT 275?